down. <laughs> Maybe I'll. All right. I'll Maybe You're good to go. <laughs> Thank you, Athena. You're welcome. Have a great meeting, everyone. <laughs> Have a nice night, Athena. <laughs> oh. Not sure we're going to let you live this one down, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I kept saying, no, I can do it. I can do it. And then, like, the first button I'm supposed to hit, I have no clue where it is. <laughs> I'm just calling you. Well, that didn't work. Oh, Andy's in the attendee section. Paul, oh. can you pop him over? Yeah. Ah. Thank you, Mandy. I just looked. He wasn't there a minute ago, and now he's there. Maybe it's because when you hit the magic hour, you come in on... That happened to Dorothy the other day. So I think, I think we may be ready then, yes? Hi, Andy. Yeah, hi. So Paul, are, are we all set to go? I think so. We are recording. Okay, good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, seeing a quorum with the committee, and I believe everyone's here as chair, I'm calling the meeting to order at uh, 5.32 um, on Wednesday. Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allow us to hold this virtual meeting of the joint Capital Planning Committee. When you see the agenda, you'll see that this is, you are at the right meeting if you're a, a public joining us. I'm gonna just call on everyone who's a committee member um, by name and just have you confirm that you're here and that you can hear and so we can hear you. Um, I'll just go down the list. Mandy Jo Henneke. Present. Andy Steinberg. Present. Peter Demling. Present. Carrie Spitzer. Present. Tammy Ellie. Uh, present. Alex Lefebvre. Present. Okay, it, it looks like everybody is here. Um, I'm gonna ask you all to put yourself on mute until we get to the discussion period, just to avoid background noise. There is no chat room, but if you get into some kind of technical difficulties and lose connection, um, uh, staff will connect you figure out what to do. If we have to tr take a pause in the meeting, um, the minutes will recall it, we'll record that, and then we'll come back and uh, reconnect everybody. So this meeting is being recorded and we will be posting the video. Members of the public who are participating can also find the presentation ma materials on the town website for the JCPC committee on the May 20th packet. Um, as chair, I just wanted to say a couple opening comments before I call on Sean Magnano, who's going to do the presentation and then back and forth. Um, as I think everybody knows, we're facing severe revenue shortfalls on Monday night as a result the town council to get to a balanced budget, assuming no cuts in state aid, severely cut the capital budget um, in percent terms is down by about 60% or two and a half million, almost two and a half million dollars. So the same budget we were looking at a short three months ago in March is now substantially less. Um, and the focus of today's meeting is thus to look at uh, a revised capital request for both the coming year, which is the year that starts on July 2020, and the four years after that. So we are still looking at a five-year budget as well as a one-year budget. Um, we as a committee will need to hear, ask questions, discuss, and ultimately make a recommendation, and our report is due by June 1st. So at the end of this meeting, after we've had a discussion, we'll determine whether or not we are um, have enough information if we need to call another meeting or not. Um, Sean, if you want to put up the agenda, 
The first item on the agenda is public comments. We list them first. Um, and the agenda up at the top will give the public instructions on how to either call in or how to participate if they're on Zoom as a participant. Um, if you're on Zoom and you want to participate and make a public comment, hit the raise hand button and we will call on you and then I will ask for your name and address. If you join the council meeting via telephone, please press star nine on your telephone. Are there any um, people in the audience who would like to make a uh, public comment at this point. I see one hand. Uh, Felicia Mednick is is on. Um, Felicia, go ahead. Paul's going to have to unmute her and allow her to talk. Okay, Paul, you need to. Un <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, I'm Felicia Mednick. Do I need to say something other than my name? Um, it would be helpful just for the record if you give your address to Felicia. 137 State Street, Amherst, Massachusetts. Thank you. So um, I'm, um, whoopsie, I'm here to comment on the, the citizen capital request um that was made and i think saho may have written a letter if everybody didn't get it i could read it but i or i can just assume that everybody got it and i'll just comment about it is that best um yes i forwarded it to everyone that when i received it this afternoon okay thank you thank you thank you and um i'm i'm here speaking because the three people who did the request saho and ali have ap tests tomorrow and Andra is on the Energy and Climate Action Committee and is meeting right now. So that's why I'm, I just want to bring this to everybody's attention. And um, anyway, I just want to say that the resident capital request is it's the only one that's being made and it's still applicable because as we come out of this COVID, we need to be set up, you know, for, for a different kind of fuel economy so we don't start into another big problem. Um, with energy. And so I guess my ask is just that you consider it seriously The Energy and Climate Action Committee su supports it. A lot of students support it, other citizens support it, and Mothers Out Front support it, and I support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other people in um, attending the meeting in the public who would like to make a public comment at this point? Seeing none, I think we will move to the agenda for the meeting. Um, the next up um, is the presentation by staff for the revised current year budget, the fiscal year budget, the next year we're looking at as well as the four years after that. And you have two documents that we'll, we will be discussing. Um, one is a consolidated uh, presentation, and I have great pleasure to welcome Sean Magnano, a recently appointed town finance director, back to the town, who will, I believe, do the presentation. But we're also joined by Paul Bockelman, who, if there are questions or comments, and as we go back and forth on some of the proposals, he will be um, there to be responding as well. As all of you know, Sean comes to this role as our finance director with a deep knowledge of our schools as well as townwide capital issues. Um, Sean, I think I'm turning the um, mic over to you. Hey, can everybody hear me? Uh, yeah, you have to unmute your mic, right? Okay. Can um, can everybody else hear me now? Okay. I can. And, and everybody can see the um, screen. Okay. Good. Is everyone good for the screen? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to bring you through a brief presentation, and then we're going to look at the full plan and go through that briefly, and then we'll we'll dive into um, more detail. 
So the three things we're gonna go over right now is an update on capital funding, which um, Kathy alluded to a little bit earlier. We're gonna review the updated capital request, which is much smaller than it was back in March. And then we're gonna discuss and develop the recommendation to the town manager. So quick update on capital funding. Um, town revenues are estimated to decrease between 3.6 and 7.7 .7 million uh, due to the economic impact of COVID-19. Um, this is all based on the, the presentation to the Finance Committee and the um, guidelines that the Finance Committee has developed. Um, to offset this revenue decline, one of the strategies that we're looking at is decreasing capital funding to 5% or approximately 5%. Um, for a long time, we've had a target of 10%. And this was the year that we were supposed to get there. And there was a lot of excitement about getting to our goal. And of course, uh, you know, what happened happened. And now we're, we're going back down a little bit. Um, as a result, the capital request is going to be modified for FY21 from what uh, was originally presented back in um, January, February, and March. Um, and one of the things we've done, one of the modifications we've made is, you'll see in a second, is um, create a funding source that allows us to respond rapidly in FY21 if a critical capital need arises. And this, you'll, you'll understand this in a second, but the approach we're taking this year is really specific to this year um, because of the condensed timeline that we had um, to sort of readjust our capital plan um, and because of the uncertainty of what revenues look like and even what operations look like, um, whether school returns to normal, whether the college students come back to town, there's a lot of unknowns about um, the needs, the capital needs of the town next year. And so the approach we've taken this year is uh, reflective of that. So this is the funding side of the capital request. Um, to do a quick recap, the top part goes over the levy, the, the funds that come from, based, come from um, the levy limit or based on the levy limit. Um, so in the past, it, our goal was 10%. As Kathy mentioned, we're back down to about 5% for FY21. Um, right now, we're not proposing any new borrowings. Uh, there is one new other source of aid, which is the 62,000 that we'll talk about in a minute. And then there's $841,883 uh, of state aid, which is the chapter 90 money. And we're conscious that that could be reduced. And if it does get reduced, um, we'll have to decide whether we continue doing those roads or if the, the amount of roads and, and sidewalks and things that that supports, that that also gets reduced. So the total funding for capital for FY21 at this point is 3,687,934. And you can see the years after this, we have not yet adjusted the four years after this. Um, it's something that we'll be working on when we start working on the FY22 budget, the operating budget, which will be much earlier than normal. We'll also have to work on the, the five-year capital plan much earlier than normal as well, um, because obviously this FY22 and beyond may look a little differently um, given what's going on. Uh, summary of the expenditure side. So this shows um, the, the large categories of the expenditure requests. So before we get to any pro new projects for FY21, we have to cover our actual debt. And that is the 1,377,400. That is a combination of um, JCPC approved debt or JCPC recommended debt, um, the regional school um, debt that's been approved and a projection of um, some costs for bar uh, doing short-term borrowings. Um, which we typically have each year. Then below that, you have the cash capital number, which ties to the budget, um, uh, the guidance that was given earlier, and then 62,000 for other, and then 1,941. So it, the, the goal here is that it balances and it, and it does. And then you can see in the out years, it does not balance, which is um, one of the hurdles that we were trying to resolve back in March. Before all this happened, we, were, we still had some work to do. Um, and now So we're gonna go through each category and I'm not sure if people can ask questions as we go or if we wanna wait till the end, but um, 
I guess we'll wait till the end or somebody can raise their hand. I'm not sure if I can let them speak, but um, so the first section is the cash capital. So there's three uh, sort of categories here that we're putting out there for right now. Uh, the first one is sidewalks, $200,000. Uh, the second one is road repair, $900,000, which is a reduction of 100,000 from what it was originally. And then we are proposing a capital reserve account, which could be used for all departments, buildings, equipment, um, of $306,651. And so I'll go into a little bit more on each of those. So the, the roads and sidewalks have been a very, uh, have been a public goal of the, of the committee for a while. We knew there was a, a large backlog. And it's one of the projects that we know most likely we can continue to um, complete that during whatever stay-at-home orders potentially come up in the fall or in the future. Um, if, if things change, we can continue working on that type of project and it will keep working towards the backlog that we had. Um, the capital reserve, so given all of the uncertainty about, about FY21 and what operations are gonna look like and revenues, it was really difficult with the short timeline to decide which projects, what, what specific projects we should fund, um, not knowing if they will be critical for next year. So what we think is a, is a reasonable course of action is to put whatever funds we can into this reserve so that if anything critical pops up next year, we can react quickly. Um, and we did reach out to departments already to see if there are any critical needs that they knew of at this point, and we haven't heard anything back yet. Um, but these funds will be earmarked specifically for a critical urgent need that pops up next year. And in addition to that, I think one thing that's important to note is, so there, there quite possibly could be some capital type expenses related to COVID and some of the mitigation efforts and prevention efforts that um, town facilities will have to uh, put in place. And so you may have already heard a little bit about this, but we do have um, some money now from the state through the CARES Act that we can apply for for FY20 and FY21. And these funds specifically can go to pay for things like that, which allows us to not have to budget for those things out of JCPC, which is crucial this year because we have limited funds to begin with. Um, but between the CARES Act and FEMA, which we'll also be reaching out to, um, we can cover those COVID type expenses that we anticipate for next year. The next section is the other section. So a new revenue source that came in sort of late this year was a, um, a tax funding source um, from like Uber and Lyft and things like that. Um, and the, right now this is earmarked to fund downtown improvements such as sidewalks, new lighting, kiosks, and things that will enhance the downtown. And then the last section is state aid in chapter 90. So this is the money that we get each year and it typically goes into roads and sidewalks. Um, and again, if, this, if the state does reduce this area, um, the allocation will have to be adjusted as well. I did speak with Gilbert about what happened in the past when, when we had economic downturns. Um, he doesn't recall huge reductions to this in the past. He does, I think he did say it did fluctuate at times, um, but it's something we'll certainly keep an eye on. So before we go to the next section, I'm gonna share the, um, the full capital plan because probably would be a good point to stop and do discussion. So this is the full capital plan that you're used to seeing, um, broken down by different, different departments. So you'll see FY21, We've created a new column here where we've moved everything that was originally requested for FY21. Some of those items may be things that can be funded next year because they become critical. And some of those items may have, will have to be, re, we'll have to reevaluate those where they fall in the future from FY22 and beyond. Um, so everything in the yellow column is what was in the original plan that was presented back in March. Um, you'll see in facilities, the $306,000 capital reserve And if I keep going down, you'll see the public works and you'll see the money for the sidewalks, the road repair and resurfacing, 
um, the downtown improvements, which was the, that other funding source, and then the state aid, Chapter 90. And I won't spend too much time on the projects in FY22 and beyond, but um, this all feeds into what you've already seen. So I guess, Kathy, at this point, do you want to turn it over for discussion on the FY21 plan? Yes, and what I thought um, for the committee members, just for a little point of clarification, we saw a library in schools on March 11th, and we did see the citizen capital request, but this other list, that's the delayed list, that was the meeting that was canceled. You know, we had a tentative end of March meeting, so it was on the book. So when you said, uh -oh. you know, so Sean, you, you, only, you know, we only saw it if you were very astute and said, oh, look, here's, here's um, a long series. So I thought maybe, um, a way of handling this is ask any clarifying questions on what you just went through very quickly. And then one thought I had, but I just want to see if people think this is reasonable. If we look just at the coming year, the FY21, and then you looked at what's being delayed to 22, are there any that you're wondering why they're not on the critical list for now um, to you know focus on next year and then focus on the five year that was just an easy organizing principle for me, but I have no, I think people can ask questions or make comments in any way they want to. So if there are any clarifying or other kinds of comments, just to start us off, I see Carrie put her hand up right away. Um, so Carrie. Hi, um, uh, thank you. Yeah. Hi, John. Thanks for uh, the presentation. Uh, a clarifying question about the CARES Act money, the 3.4 million um, that you said was earmarked for Amherst. I, correct me if I'm wrong, and I haven't had as much time as I'd like to go over all of this ahead of time, but it, I'm not seeing that reflected in the plan for the fiscal year. Is that because we're not sure of how much it is, or maybe I missed it? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question. Um, so there, there's going to be two rounds of CARES Act funding requests. So the first one is due in a couple weeks. Um, that's going to be on everything spent through FY20. Um, so we'll begin a request in for that, for everything that's been incurred to date. We've reached out to the schools to get um, what they've spent on, on COVID-related things, um, and we've got our own list growing. Um, and for FY21, I don't think we know enough about what those expenditures in total look like yet. Um, and this, again, would be an, another funding source. Um, we can certainly include them in the future once we do find out. But I think some of those plans are still being developed about what types of, um, you know, PPE we need. Are there, are there other things that are bigger ticket items? Um, and the, the other thing about the CARES Act money, which complicates it, is there's conversations going on at the federal level about changing the um, scope of what that money can be used for. Right now, it can only be used to cover expenses. There's the, at least discussion around that money being able to be used as a revenue replacement type funding source as well. Um, and so we were on a webinar a few days ago. So they, they want the, the state is saying, use it for what you've spent on COVID, um, but also be mindful that it's potentially could be that this, the eligibility of what can, that money can be used for could change. Um, so it's sort of a, a balancing act right now. We, we definitely wanna use it for everything that we need to use it for. Could I just clarify, is it capital only or could you also use it on the operating budget side? Um, the CARES Act money can be used on operate operations as well. I mean, it can be used on um, overtime, for example, um, and things of that nature. Um, I see Andy's got his hand up and Alex has her hand up. So Andy. Uh, when I was looking at the uh, spreadsheet that you had for the um, multiple years, the one thing that I was uh, curious about is that it looked to me like um, things that were FY21 and then delayed were not then repeated into another year. They just disappeared. Yeah, so I think the reason for that is we haven't yet had enough time to go through and say if we can't do these items, A, we don't know which items we're not going to be able to do, um, but B, we also haven't had enough time for department heads to review, revisit their list and place them accordingly. Um, one of the things we're, we're at least keeping open is that potentially more money could be available for capital needs. Um, 
when we revisit things in the fall. If again, if there's another funding source or if the economy turns around faster and we can make more money available for capital, that, that could be an option. Um, we're also working, continuing to work with department heads around reviewing their old articles or outstanding articles and what hasn't been spent and turning back any funds that they're not going to need for the projects that were approved. And that money also can be made available to try to accomplish some of the projects on this delayed list. So the, the main thing is that what's been delayed is it may be done in FY21 if it becomes critical and, it, and then the next planning process, we're gonna have to re-slot these um, based on the department heads um, perspective. Alex? Sorry, it's in a different spot than Zoom, or I mean uh, Google Meet. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, one is, um, I guess, what's the process or have we set up some sort of process for what accessing critical and urgent need means? Um, and you don't necessarily have to ask, answer the question, right? I just like want to make sure there's some sort of process that all the department heads understand what's going to be required so that, you know, our boiler breaks down and we think that's critical and you guys think, oh no, you should budget for me. Like, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page with how to access that money and how to prioritize and whether, I don't know, you come back at JCPC if two things happen, you know, one at the school and one at the library, do we come back together? Like, how, what does that look like? Yep, no, it's a, um, that is something we'll be working on over the next, you know, before July 1st, for sure. Um, and make sure the department heads are well aware of what that process looks like. Um, the other, thing is if there's any catastrophic type capital needs we'll go to what we would have gone to in the past which would be you know going to town council immediately to figure out how to address that um so so there are a couple options we can use to address something if it's really catastrophic but um again we've already reached out to par department heads to ask them if there's anything on their lists currently that they think is critical at, at this current moment um and we haven't heard anything back yet okay thanks i, I think my biggest concern is that it's a relatively small number and we know that all of our buildings are at end of life and everything's good as long as it's good right i mean we just we don't know when anything's going to happen so mm -hmm. um my second question was um about um i don't know entirely um the cares act what qualifies and this is kind of linked to the delay things that are being delayed so for example, I'm thinking of um, access to computer technology, whether it's um, creating like curbside pickup at the libraries for laptops or whether it's the schools who supply laptops third grade and up, but K through two aren't currently supplied with laptops. And so I know the budget that we had was for 706 new Chromebooks that were replacement Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's being um, extended so that we can continue to use the ones, but we have, a, we have a whole K through two group that don't currently have access to Chromebooks. So right. is that something that can be paid for under the CARES Act as an expense, or is that something we need to be thinking about in terms of priorities under the capital budget, since clearly it's a COVID directly related expense? Yeah, it's it's possible. So I can send out the, um, there's a pretty nice guidance sheet on the CARES Act and the funding um, in the CARES Act can be used on things much that are more broad than what FEMA can be used for. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing I think we, uh, Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, we learned recently is that the other good thing about the CARES Act money is it can be used as a match for FEMA money. So when you get FEMA money that, that covers 75%, um, normally the, the jurisdiction has to come up with the other 25%. Um, we can use the CARES Act money as that 25% match um, for the FEMA money. So, the, but the, there's a pretty good list and descriptive list of what the CARES Act money can be used for, and it's pretty broad. Um, so we can, I, I believe that's, without looking at it specifically in front of me, I believe um, distance learning type things is an option. Um, the only thing I'll say is there, there are a lot of buckets of CARES Act money. Um, this 3.4 is the one that came to the town for sort of COVID related you know, PPE and overtime expenses, things like that. Um, the school has also gotten a separate um, allocation. I don't know enough about that. You think I would, but I don't. <laughs> um, and, and there's other pots of money that have been given out to specific, um, you know, the health department or um, there's one other one. And so I think the, during the webinar, they said there were 40 different pots of CARES Act money that are out there for different things. 
Um, so the main thing is we just need to be aware of all those different pots of money and make sure we're using the money, the, you know, the, 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 the type of funding that makes the most sense. Okay. And then the 62,000 from the Uber receipts, is that money that has to be used in a certain way or have we just chosen to use it for downtown improvements? I don't know enough about that. I'll have to confirm with um, uh, Sonia about that. I believe it's supposed to be used for things related to um, the, the service itself, but I would have to confirm with Sonia. Okay, and then my last is just a correction on the spreadsheet um, under delayed cost. The IT request for library, it's actually 31,900, not 29,200. Okay, yeah, I can update that. Unless you guys, unless you, unless you made it a smaller amount, <laughs> but. I don't, if we did, I don't think it was intentional. So. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, Peter, you were next. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm a little confused, but I, 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 think I'm, I think I'm almost on board with, with process wise. So I have a process question, then a comment. Um, so process wise, with this capital reserve line that you're talking about, you're, you're not looking for specific line item proposals from the, from the various um, departments um, like we usually do uh, for us to then review on a line item basis and say, okay, up to this amount. Um, you're just, and and, and when, you, when you showed that five year plan, I saw nothing for the schools. So I'm trying to square this with what we heard just last night, which is at the Amherst School Committee, the superintendent showed us a line item capital proposal for FY21, about 100,000. Um, so when you say you've, you've talked to the department heads, have you talked with the superintendent since last night? Or, or like, how does that, can you just square those two things for me? Yeah, so I think your, your first question was um, about how the reserve would work, um, which I think, um, yeah, I mean, it would be available. It's not going to be for specific projects at this point. And again, it's because we don't know what that looks like for next year um, or what the operations look like for next year. Um, I have been in contact with the schools on their revised request and um, particularly with the business manager and the facility director. Um, and basically, we've got requests from all the departments. And so right now, all those are sort of in this holding delayed pattern. I haven't updated the delayed yet for their revised request. Um, but I've reached out to them about that. So same, just the schools would be in the same boat as everybody else where if any of those revised requests, the, um, the computers, I think there was some vehicles. Um, and I know they had some COVID related expenditures, which I um, updated them on that there, there could be a separate pot of money to pay for the COVID related expenditures. Um, they would be in the same boat as everybody else where they could, if one of those individual items becomes critical or urgent that they could request um, these funds for that. And there is, um, there is a section in that big plan for the schools. Maybe I went through it quickly, um, but there is a whole page on the schools that still has their original March request and the delay, co delay column for FY21 and then has all of their FY22 and beyond. Okay, um, so I, I guess the comment is um, so this, uh, sort of two things. So one, at the Amherst level, we've only uh, seen the most recent proposal of what the superintendent, facilities director, finance director consider to be our most urgent requests last night. So um, myself and other members of the committee are still talking and providing feedback and input. We have next week to um, to approve that request. Um, and um, I, I, I don't think we can say right now that that we'll definitely as of today or as of June 1st have nothing to to come forward with that we definitely know we'll need for like just one example I won't go through the list <laughs> I won't talk about walk-in freezers and whatnot but just one example um, you know we have uh, seventy thousand for the Fort River roof um, I don't I think everybody here understands the situation with the Fort River roof and what the impact that can have if that was seventy it was zero um, and it, just a couple hours ago I was talk I got some input from the uh, facilities director that even another ten or twenty on that line item could prevent an emergency kind of situation like we've had in the past where we have a, a sudden roof leak and we lose rooms and whatnot. And so when I, when I think about small, relatively speaking, right, small items like that, that might have huge impact that we're still having discussions as fast as we can. Um, and, then, and then I look at the first thing on one of the slides where we have this pretty large item for sidewalks and roads that, that isn't touched all that much. And I understand it's a reduction, but 
Um, you know, I, I guess I'm just still in the throes of last night's capital presentation and the one from the region. And we've brutalized <laughs> our capital plans. And we are really flying without a net on a number of things, not just the roof. Uh, you know, I won't, again, I don't want to go on for 10 minutes, so I won't go for everything. But um, I, 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 see, I see kind of an issue with um, just saying, let's just propose nothing, put kind of a generic COVID capital project that people can then make petition for because I, I think there goes, there's going to be some non-zero thing um, that, that we're going to have to take care of. So, Mandy? Thank you. Um, Peter got to one of the things I was going to say. Um, I liked, but I'm going to comment since almost everyone else has, Alex's thought about how much of this capital could be claimed as potential COVID related expenses. Like if we need some Chromebooks and we were gonna buy some to replace some there, if we really do need to buy them for K to two, maybe we don't assign them to the students, we buy them there. And that can sort of at least cover a portion of what would normally be replaced in a capital year. Um, I think we need to start thinking creatively about things like that, that how much can we apply under for under any of the COVID pots of money for capital, um, it, especially if it remains very restricted to non-operating expenses, well, non-makeup um, of lost revenue. Um, certainly, if it makes up lost revenue, our capital line might be looking different because we might not have to slash our budget as much. Um, but I'm concerned about the failure to do any equipment buys at all. We regularly have yearly requests for the replacement of police cars. Um, we had an ambulance on here this year at some point. We have PPE for our fire department where we replace their fire um, proof suits on a regular schedule and none of that is in here. Yet we're pretty much keeping roads and sidewalks exactly the same which is double the chapter 90. Roads and sidewalks, if we zero those numbers out from cash capital, still get in theory around $800,000 of investment. Um, I get that maybe it's easier to say, well, we can keep that construction going, but we can buy a fire truck. Well, not a fire truck potentially, um, but an ambulance or a police cruiser or a dump truck in the middle of COVID for social distancing, it's a piece of equipment. Um, so I'm having a really hard time saying this is a capital plan I can support and recommend the manager recommend to the town council because I don't think it's um, something that, I mean, I know roads and sidewalks are important, but they're still getting, chapter 90 is not gonna go down to zero. On Monday night, we heard from Representative Dom that they're going to try and keep the chapter 90 money and the chapter 70 money as close to even as possible. Um, if that's the case, we'd be cutting our roads and sidewalk in half, but if we don't do that, we're cutting everything else out. And I don't know, I look at too many of these capital equipments and I say that 300,000 is not enough for when two cruisers go and the Fort River roof goes. And if we have students back in the school, the, the um, HVAC chiller goes, we can't cover it all. And to say, we'll take that out of borrowing and reserves in order to keep roads and sidewalks at a million a year, I, it, I don't think that's something I can support at this point. Carrie, you have another comment. Yeah, um, I would like to echo both what, what Peter and Mandy Joe just said. I, I think the, the thing I'd like to share is that last night we had a school committee meeting and it's very clear and we've received even today new guidance from the CDC that the classrooms are not gonna look like they have in the past and the social distancing that's gonna be required to give people confidence in sending their kids back to our schools I, I don't see a way it's going to happen without some necessary capital investment. And so this capital plan that we came up with was pre-COVID. And so all of those needs were there. And now we're going to have additional COVID-related needs. And so it just, it makes me really anxious to, like Peter mentioned the roof there, we could go through a lot of other things on, on here that have been delayed. And, and the other thing I want to point out is that I don't see fiscal year 22 
being better. So if we're postponing things like fixing the roof, which we know is likely, if it doesn't fail this year, it'll fail next year. And unfortunately, the school building project, um, we're not going to get a new school in that time frame. So to give the public the confidence to reopen our schools, I think we need to be willing to make that capital investment. And if we because so many people rely on our schools for childcare and, and to the ability to work, I think it, it, it's also tied into our ability to, you know, raise revenue and, and have folks, you know, be, go back to as much as normal as, as, as is possible in the next year or year and a half or so. Um, I don't see um, other uh, Alex has her hand up again. I also have a couple of comments, but go ahead, Alice, Alex, in the same vein. Sure. Um, so I also want to echo Mandy Joe's concern that definitely struck me. I know that roads and sidewalks have been a priority and I understand that. Um, and I can say honestly that I don't have a feel from the public of where their priorities would be relative to roads and sidewalks. So anything I would say would be sort of my own feeling. Um, and so I would be curious to hear the, the logic behind it. Um, and then also, um, Sean, you had mentioned about if money was freed up either through unspent funds being sent back or if we were to have additional funds that came in, um, we might look at some of the items on the delayed list. So does that mean we need to prioritize the delayed list so that we can determine how that extra money is spent or what's the expectation around you know, this sort of delayed money? Yeah, well, I think your input would be helpful. Um, I mean, we'll obviously have to work with department heads to kind of identify what the, again, what the, what the critical needs are, if there's new money that becomes available. But I think your input on where your perspectives are would be helpful. Um, another thing I'll just point out, and I, you know, I don't disagree with anything anybody said. Um, another thing I'll just point out is that, you know, some of these departments still have projects in prior years that they can continue to work on. Um, there's still capital articles from 19 and 20 that still can be, um, I think, you know, you, it's well, I think it was well documented that there, there was a little bit of a backlog in getting some of these projects done. Um, while this is not ideal, this year does allow the, the, the departments to kind of catch up on some of those projects that were behind. Um, so it's just another thing to keep in mind. Um, it's, again, it's very specific to each department, um, but it's just another thing to keep in mind. Um, that actually is a nice segue into one of the comments or questions I had when we when we met in March we asked about um, any unspent funds in uh, capital items that have been appropriated and we got some input from the schools but we didn't ask townwide so are there uh, not yet spent funds for road repairs for others that could be happening and I know for example, that we appropriated money for a study for uh, East Pleasant sidewalk, but um, there a series of lines that equipment that was budgeted for is sitting there but not purchased. So could can we can we easily? I, I think Sonia has an accounting of those mm -hmm. looking across town wide. So how much is sitting out there? Um, not just savings because we've had lower costs, but for a variety of reasons, things didn't happen. That That's just a basic question on getting, is it a few hundred thousand dollars? Is it $500,000, you know, how much and right. where is it? So that was one question I had and a request to try to get that accounting. And then on COVID, when I look um, forward, it's echoing what others have said is how can we define, how much can we stretch that? The schools have HIVAC systems. Um, that have been put on delay. Um, and I listened to the discussion at the regional school where Carrie raised the point that air quality is going to be particularly critical when kids come back into the school. So if they are um, being held together by band-aids and we, we're judging the risk of failure to not be 100%, but you know something less than that, could you classify something like that is a COVID expenditure to make it safe for kids to come back to school. And um, there are a couple of those items. So it's, it's what could fit um, mm -hmm. under a, um, you know, keeping circulation, removing dust, um, 
can those fit? And if we're bringing in hand sanitizers, you, new wash stations in the high school because they only had bathrooms and they talked about a particular line item for that. So I think getting some better sense of not just from what the, the text of the law looks like, but do we think that people are going to be able to stretch that? And are we suddenly well beyond the 3 million we're looking at, you know, if we start adding all of those up so we can't grandly think that this is a pot of money that can be. So that, that's a question. And my last question until Andy had asked it, I, does the delayed column mean if I don't see it in the FY22, does that mean it's not anywhere? Yeah, so the delayed column, um, the delayed column hasn't, it's just, it was everything in FY21 moved over. Um, again, because we haven't had time to either re-slot it in a future year or it's something that still may be done in FY21. Um, so everything that's in a delayed column is just what was in FY21 before it moved over. It hasn't been repositioned anywhere. So it's in FY22 if there's an exact match um, to it. No, no, no so, it's, not again, even in, it's not even in FY22 if there's an exact match, because that's the way I was reading it. Right. Some things you're, because nope. FY22, you have a pretty high expenditure level on your summary tables for FY22. Right, yeah. You may remember, even before all of this happened, um, the five-year plan, we needed to do some work to balance the five-year plan. Even when we got to the 10% funding goal, we still had a deficit in FY21, um, or, short, or a shortfall in FY21 in terms of covering all of the requests. Um, and then we had a bigger gap in FY22. And then the out years got a little bit better where we might be able to move things around to, to even it out. Um, so we had some work to do even before this happened. Um, so everything got a little bit worse because of this. Okay, so just so to make sure I, when I'm looking at your summary slides, FY22 projected had a $2.7 million deficit in it. That did not include the delayed expenditures is what I'm hearing. No, we had that, that's what was there before. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Tamsin's got her hand up. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, my um, school doesn't I'd show like to, I'd like to echo uh, what Mandy said um, about some of the, the concerns with police and fire and some of the other capital requests, especially in the schools. I'd like to know the rationale behind putting all the uh, money towards the roads, just because how did you arrive at this? Yeah, so um, the rationale was, we know we have a very large backlog in terms of roads. I think there have been presentations around, we could throw $2 million at this every year for the next 10 years, and we're still gonna be behind in terms of, of roads. Um, and I believe the roads were just described by counselors in the past as you know a fifth major project that we have to achieve. Um, so, so roads has been sort of front and center for a while. Um, we've heard a lot about it. Um, and so that's one piece. And then the other piece was for all the requests that we had, it's really hard right now to determine the best way to allocate the money that we have. I agree with you that 300,000 is, is small, but it's very difficult to say, you know, the, the request from the schools is more important than the fire department and the request from the fire department is more important than the police department or, or so, so on. Um, and partially the reason why is because we don't know what things are going to look like. If, if the college doesn't come back on, there's a different dynamic out there um, in terms of the capital needs. If school doesn't come back in the fall, same, same thing, it could be a little bit different. Um, so I, I, again, one of the things that was mentioned here is we plan to revisit this in the fall, just like we would revisit the operating budget and, and see what operations look like at that point in time. And also, again, if there's new revenue sources available at that point in time. Um, do we, Sean, um, can we get a better sense from DPW if we go to lower on roads and sidewalks, what won't get done? I mean, I know we've a couple of times at the council level or the finance committee saying, is there a priority list? And we've been told the priority list, there is one, but it changes all the time, you know, on time, what roads next, what project is next? Um, Cause I think the, um, some sense of, what we're defining as urgent um, for a year with a restricted budget would be uh, something useful to get um, on, 
you know, your favorite road. Uh, you know, and I have some questions about out years um, later, but I just want to stay, I think we should stay focused on what's being proposed for the next 12 months. Um, Peter and then Andy, both, I'll just do Peter first, then Andy. Yeah, I'll try and make as quick as I can. Um, so I, mean, I know you're getting a lot of heat for this, you guys, but this is, you know, it's, it's what we have to do. Um, I think the thing with the sidewalks in my mind is, I, I guess I want to hear that that line item has been scrubbed and brutalized as much as we've tried to scrub and brutalize our own capital proposals. Um, the thing with the, um, I wanted to correct myself on a figure I mentioned earlier. I said that we had a capital request presented to us last night that was for about 100,000 for the Amherst schools. It, it's actually 220. Um, mm -hmm. and includes things like the, that plow from 2003. Um, and doesn't include any money for the Fort River um, roof. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, since it's just been a day since we've heard it, we've been trying to follow up and, and, and we have a meeting scheduled for Monday where we're gonna have to vote this, right? And so the school committee on Monday is gonna have some sort of formal proposal request to the town council. And I'll, I'm assuming that that's gonna get updated between now and the next six days. Um, so, and, and, and that's, what, what the way it was presented to us is that these are already urgent needs that have to be taken care of after they cut 500,000 from, from the uh, original FY21 capital proposal, right? And so, so maybe that can be cut down more, but there's gonna be things like uh, either proactive roof, roof repair or vehicle purchase that isn't going to be a come back to us when it emerges kind of thing that we're just gonna have to decide on pretty quickly. So, thanks. Andy? So, uh, well, one thing is to just uh, follow up on one thing Peter said to make sure it's clarified, but then uh, really to go to the point I was going to make. Um, the submission that's due June 1st is actually to the town manager, not to the council, because the town manager, the next step is the town manager proposes a budget to the council and he needs to get those recommendations to incorporate. Uh, the point that I was going to make, though, is I, for a while, have been thinking about today's meeting and wondering to what extent today's meeting ought to be about um, trying to establish a little better understanding of the criteria that would be used for the cash capital that has to be invested in the coming year, uh, whether the decision can be made right away or not. So a little bit more about what it is that we really think are the, the types of things that would have to be available for funding um, for the crisis reasons that were stated, and then um, use those criteria to just double check to make sure that we have enough money available. Um, it seems like the uh, cash reserves was kind of a number pulled out after um, prioritizing roads and sidewalks as opposed to being developed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed that way, being developed uh, in relation to, we've looked at what are the um, things that might come up and this is what we think is uh, gonna be uh, sufficient to cover it. Yeah, no, no, I'll just reiterate that we, we did reach out to departments to find out what critical needs they anticipate at this point in time um, and from their existing request, and we haven't received anything back yet. And did you give, give them criteria? Yeah, well, I, we said critical and urgent needs for their, for their departments. I mean, we can, so one thing we can work on um, what I'm hearing is we could try to define that more, um, but but that's how we framed it. Alex? So you reach out to departments you haven't heard back, meaning they don't have anything or meaning they just haven't responded? Um, well, I think in some cases they haven't responded, in some cases they don't have anything. Um, but we did give them a, uh, you know, I think they're aware of our timelines and our calendar. I just, I, 
I don't know what the, the I, like I'm, I'm not even sure what we're supposed to come to agreement on today. I mean, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I feel like town is prioritizing roads and sidewalks, which I could make an argument, right? Walkability is gonna be really important, <laughs> right? When we're social distancing, you want the roads good for bicycles, you know, whatever. But I, like it, it, I feel like, I feel like there are so many unknowns that we're being asked to sign off on roads and sidewalks being a priority and here's the leftover money into you know, a bucket to deal with when we can based on we don't know. And like I, like, I just personally don't feel like it's a plan per se. And I'm not in any way criticizing because there's so little information and there's everything's up in the air. I just, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to wrap my brain around what are, what, what, what should we be, do, what are we doing today? Like, what's our point? I mean, even the five year plan, the numbers aren't plugged in and we don't know the numbers. So I don't even know how we, articulate around a five-year plan. I guess I, I just, I'm, I don't know whether it's just too premature for us to do anything other than say, hey, maybe rethink that roads and sidewalk and beyond that and, and maybe come up with, uh, you know, some criteria so people understand how to access that fund. But beyond that, I, I guess I'm just struggling to know what benefit I can really provide today. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think everything everybody said is helpful. Um, I think one of the things we we're looking for is feedback on your priorities. Um, I think one thing that's come up, come across loud and clear is, um, at least to this committee, the, the roads and sidewalks is not the highest priority. Um, so it's definitely something we're going to re, you know, relook at. Um, that being said, again, I, I, I think your point about there's so many unknowns and trying to pick specific projects right now is, is going to be a challenge. Um, cause what we don't want to do is say a project right now is really important and fund that. And then something that we don't can't cover becomes really important next year. Um, so we're going to have to kind of walk that line in between. Um, but no, I think your input on, on the roads and sidewalks is very important. Um, if you have other thoughts on criteria for if we do shift more money to the, the reserve side of this or, um, on specific projects, we welcome that as well. Um, again, this is your chance to give us input on this, this was, again, we have a very condensed timeline for, for getting this capital plan um, together. Um, it's got all the same unknowns as the operating budget. And in a lot of cases, the operating budget will impact this. And so we haven't done a five-year or, or a projection of FY22 yet for the operating budget, which will impact what funds are available for capital as well. Um, so those things kind of go hand in hand and we'll be working on them in the, in the coming weeks. I guess I would just say, I mean, that like, this is my, I don't know, fourth year on JCPC. And I feel like, again, I mean, I know that what this committee does is in transition, but I feel like of the years that I've served, I have the least amount of information from department heads about what their priorities are. So I don't even know how to help you prioritize other than to say the bigger the bucket for critical needs and the more people know how to ask for it, the better. But I, I don't feel like I have enough information to prioritize because this year was just very condensed. Again, not through anyone fault of anyone. Just that's just how I feel. Um, I, I see both Carrie and Andy had their hand up again, and then I would like to say something to Carrie. So I just wanted to clarify that, as Peter said last night, we we did receive from the superintendent and um, the director of I might be getting his title, but but from Dr. Slaughter their priorities for the capital plan. So I guess my question is, I'm a little concerned about why <laughs> these weren't communicated to the committee or to, to the, the town manager and, and, and Sean. Um, and and Sh Sean, could you clarify when the, when the deadline you gave folks to get back to you was? Just because it, it, it seems like it, it's such an important thing <laughs> we need to make sure i mean we, we did have over two hundred thousand dollars worth of items that we identified as being um necessary and that would take eat up over you know two-thirds of what's been put aside for urgent needs so um could you just clarify that yeah no i mean so the school request again they gave us a revised school request and you know that along with all the other requests that have been submitted um for the overall plan have kind of gone um, into that sort of holding column, um, you know, for the school specifically, you know, COVID was one of their a big chunk of the request. And again, we're going to be trying to 
uh, fill, fulfill that from a different funding source going forward. Um, I think a plow truck was one of one part of the request. Um, and that's again, something I think we need to have more conversations around vehicles. Um, I know it's come up in the past and um, how the town and schools share vehicles. So that one I think just needed more conversation. Um, and you know, there's something about, there, I think there's some money for computers, which again, we need to look at, is there something from the CARES Act that can potentially help with that? Um, so I think, again, that's why that specific request hasn't um, shown up here is because I think we still need to talk through that more. Um, and, you know, we can, we can, you know, probe department heads a little bit more um, and go back to them again and, and see, you know, you know, we can share the thoughts that we've heard from all of you today and see if anything new pops up um, that might give us, you know, some more direction on how to allocate the capital reserve money. Andy? So, um, I think what I have been hearing uh, was not that we don't think that roads should be the highest priority, but that the question is, how is the amount of money determined for roads and whether um, too much was put into roads and not enough was put into a discretionary piece that could then be used during the year for critical and urgent needs um, as they are identified and they may be identified right at the beginning of the year or as the year goes on because this was pointed out earlier if something happens to the roof of an elementary school or to an HVAC system that causes failure uh, that there may be a need to access funds for that. And uh, I think that uh, at this point, um, I would say that there's a lot of skepticism as to whether th the 300,000 is enough to cover those kinds of immediately identified or identified during the year needs. And uh, but that's kind of how it's being put forward. And that's what I think the discomfort we're, you're hearing. Mandy? Yeah, uh, I, I think I agree with Andy. I mean, I'm looking at one, one of the things that Alex mentioned is we, we got some information from schools and libraries about urgent needs and all of that in terms of what's on this list, but we never got the town presentation on why these things are on this list, which makes it hard for us to sort of say what's urgent or not. But I, I look at some of this stuff and in-car video systems, police patrol bicycles, they say two per year and nothing's in any of them. So I, I, I don't know, but you know, we know generally every year we, we replace cruisers. And so when you go to the police department and say, what's a critical need, we, we try to replace them ahead of when they're totally falling apart. Um, they may respond back, well, it's not critical until it is critical because the cars go down and they, are beyond their useful life. And we don't know that now. We can guess maybe that those cars would be able to survive a year, um, but we'd then be facing potentially next year, we're a year behind in all of those scheduled replacements for all of that stuff. Um, we're not even just like a, a half a year behind because we replaced half of it. We're a year behind and some of that year behind for protective gear for the fire department, radios for the fire department, police cruisers, does really concern me that this plan, um, given how little is in the critical needs section, puts all of our scheduled replacements to keep our public safety departments in particular, but you know our workers with computer equipment and all operating at near full scale um, without having to incur massive maintenance costs, especially for vehicles, massive maintenance. Um, and I haven't really heard a plan for how that would be dealt with in the out years even. Um, would we be looking at, if we don't replace any cruisers this year, going back to our, I think it's 334 or maybe it's 223 um, schedule, or are, we, or are we looking at double the number of cruisers next year? And so it's hard for me to, to as I said, support so much into roads and sidewalks when I look at 300,000 and say, it just doesn't seem like enough to even last for what could be critical needs when a potential critical need could take up half of that with a failure of 
an ambulance say, I mean, ambulance was on here for 355,000. If our ambulance completely breaks down, we're going to have to go to service for it. Now, I just, I, I want to build on a statement Andy made, and then Alex has her hand up. I don't think we were saying roads aren't a priority, as Andy said. It's right now, if you look at the review of the updated capital request, uh, visually, it looks like roads are the only priority. Um, you know, roads and sidewalks is another way of looking at that picture because they swamp everything, and the everything else is in the 300,000. So I think some building up of critical across the other towns um, is what everyone is asking for with um, it may be just on uh, Mandy asking maybe the police would say we can go to a different schedule here safely um, but just getting some assurance that skipping a year next year they'll be fine they won't be behind by some amount so so that kind of um, in writing or through Paul information. And then if roads and sidewalks went down by some amount and the capital res the emergency reserve went up by some amount, some sense of where we think it might be used because I'm a, a little worried without a process, which is one of the first questions. Um, you know, it's first come, first serve, or we all come and favorite children or you know what would be Andy's criteria for the most critical the most urgent clearly are going to have to really apply to the allocation of a non-line item capital reserve fund so it's just it's both a question on uh, do, do we have the beginning of what that would look like but if we went larger do we have what do we know what we're giving up on roads and sidewalks I think Paul is trying to answer some of these. So I'll, and then I see Alice too. Paul. Uh, okay, so I want to put this in a bit of context, um, a, a big context. So um, Sean's been here eight days. <laughs> <laughs> so he's bearing the brunt of this. This is not his product. Uh, so first saying that when we started talking about this, we were first trying to figure out how are we going to figure out our budget. We couldn't even figure out our operating budget for FY21. That's why we're doing a one month budget and then an, a, the rest of the fiscal year. We balance that budget by, by taking a lot of 5% out of, by having the amount of money we're putting into our um, capital. So until we know what our capital number is, which we just learned, figured out a little while ago, we don't really know what is our, our, our menu of things. Um, the directive to the department heads was, what do you absolutely need? Can that cruiser last another year? Maybe, maybe not, but we, we can make it, try to make it work. That was the kind of attitude I did give it, gave to our department heads to say, I know the schedule. We all know what the schedule is, but can you get another year? This is, this is a really critical time of, of, of the budget season. So I'm not arguing back with anybody saying, well, if we delay it a year, it might be a problem down the road. Absolutely, there's not a question about that. But the challenge for us is how do we lower the budget? This is really positive feedback for us to understand that, you know, as Sean said, you know, my directive from coming in when I got hired throughout this entire process has been roads and sidewalks. How many times have I heard it? You know, fix my traffic light, fix this bridge, do that. It was always the thing. No one ever talked about PPE before. Um, so, but I, but this is helpful if you, if you give us guidance to say, you know, why don't you flip that? That's helpful information for us and we can work with that. The sec second point is we're not really going to be, have the capacity in a very relatively short time frame to really go through the capital stuff. And that's why we said, put it into a box. We can, in the fall, we can look at this in a more comprehensive way when we really have a better sense of where our finances are. So we're not saying don't spend the money on capital. But we're saying we don't really know where a lot of things are going to be. If the university isn't in session, we don't need all those ambulances, folks. So it's like there's a lot of things out there that are in, in flux. And, and the third, in all the COVID-related expenses, there is money. Anything that you, if anybody says, because of COVID, we have to, that is going to be a COVID-related expense. We're coding everything that comes into the town 
no matter what, even if it's legal fees as COVID related, because we intend to get reimbursed through FEMA for it or through the CARES Act. There, there's, a, there's money available for that type of activity. So we need to make sure we separate and don't confuse this capital plan with what is required that we are gonna be getting money for or fighting for money for through the CARES Act or, or through FEMA reimbursement. So all those, like, like the, the, you know, a lot of the things that have to happen at the schools, there's different pots of money, again, for all these different things, we have to, you know, whatever it is, I'm not gonna get into details. So I guess this, I find this meeting really, I know you're all frustrated, but it, to me, it's been really helpful um, to hear that um, roads and bridges aren't as high a priority and that we want a more balanced plan and, and we can work with that. So thank you. Alex. Um. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate the explanation. I think I think that's the part we're hoping is that somebody said, yeah, we'll make it work. We just don't know that part. But just from a procedural question, um, we normally wouldn't meet in the fall. Is there an expectation when we know more in the fall that this group would reconvene? Do you have any thoughts around procedure relative to that? Yeah, I mean, I would think that, um, so what we would hope would happen I'm frozen. Am, am I, are, you, are people hearing me? Yeah, yeah I can okay. hear you. Um, my computer's not working so well right now. Um, is that we would actually allocate, appropriate this money, and then we would have to come back to the town council for an appropriation for specific things within that that box. Is that how, that's how we thought about it. That's how you're thinking about it, Sean, right? Is, is is Sean still on audio? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yes, that's how I forget about it. So it's not just a free box of money. It's it's money that the council would say, here's capital request. We don't know what we're going to spend it on. We think we should allocate it to capital. Bring to us your proposals in the fall when you're more clear on what is going to happen. And part of that is because we need more clarity, but also part of it is just workload for our staff it, um, you know, we, uh, um, to put together the, the proposals and the, that are gonna change over time. Peter? Yeah, um, just a couple comments. So circling back to something Alex uh, asked, which is, you know, what are we all doing here? <laughs> the existential crisis of easy peasy. Um, I, I think this, the, the notion of, should we focus or advise or comment on a five year out plan? My personal feeling is we should completely shelve that right now. I don't mean we shouldn't think long term. I don't mean we shouldn't talk about, you know, big picture uh, projects in general in the town. But I think for this group, I think if we try to get a detailed plan for FY 22 and 23, it's, it's, it's too much. It's too much for the small amount of time that we have available and, and, and the multiple parallel threads that we're trying to run here right now. Um, that's just one comment there. Um, as far as criteria, I think, I think Andy's point about getting as specific as we can, even though we can't completely quantify it to department heads is, is good. I, you know, the, the kind of concept I come back to, and this is just having um, been based on my reaction to the last two, the region and the, and the um, Amherst uh, district capital proposals is, um, if, if you look at it and it doesn't feel too bad, then you're not cutting hard, hard enough, right? So if you, like, so roads and sidewalks, I have no idea exactly what that current proposal or what your next proposal would actually mean when it comes down to details about uh, service level. You know, I'd rely on you and, and the rest of the, the town for that. Um, but it's, I, th I think I think we all need to approach it as if, if it's not really painful, if you're not really um, hesitant to propose it, uh, and and uh, and you're not getting a lot of complaints about it, then then it needs to go lower. You know that's sort of like how we've been um, thinking through the the, the school proposals. Um, and um, yeah, and and because these meetings are happening rapid fire, and I, I don't want to get into a situation where the school committee votes on something that now the town council feels like we've made this statement, but it's not in line. Uh, if if you and and when I say you, I mean Paul and Sean, could just be in you know pretty fluid touch with um, with the school. Uh, leaders, superintendent, finance director, facilities director about these things, you know, so that when they ask us to vote on something next Monday, it's it's as in line with and as informed by this discussion as possible. Thanks. 
Um, I, I, I want to build on Alex's question on would we or should we be beating in the fall and then combine with Peter's, are we, can we focus just on the coming year rather than five years? Because I think, um, you know, any kind of report coming out of this group with recommendations, if you look at 22, 23, 24, 25, I had a lot of questions on line items there, you know, on given, given what were the slash and burn of this year, and what we're likely to face next year, both in can we allocate 10% next year? Well, we don't know whether we can, right? Because of what our operating budget's going to need. And if the revenues come back, maybe yes, you know, but if we're at something less than 10, substantially less than 10, some of the big ticket items. And I, I confirmed with Sean, I mean, it's a question you asked, Peter, last March. It's the big buildings aren't on this, um, you know, in terms of the draw of, you know, if we take on new debt for a school, a library, uh, the, the community fields, that's not even on this list. So thinking in terms of 22, 23, 24, and 25, that time horizon is very important to be thinking about all this. So I'm just wondering, I mean, the guidance came out of the council that we wanted a five-year look and I was one of the voices as the kibitzer last year on JCBC that capital plans didn't look like plans to me if they had three million dollar deficits them in them the year after the first year it didn't look like a plan I mean it was a wish, you know here's a wish list but it's not a plan so I'm just wondering your question on whether out of here could be something much more focused because we're in this type of year and would that mean we want to come back earlier than we normally do late fall to take another look at 22, 23, 24, 25, you know, when we have a better sense of what uh, 21 looks like. So it's, it's a question for all of us, but also, I mean, both Mandy and Andy are on the council on finance, but Andy's on finance where we asked for the five years. Um, so interactive with all of this, because I had questions on these out years. Do we really want to show some of these line items given what we're doing to 21 and 22? Yeah. Andy has his hand up. Uh, yeah, so also I was going to um, add to that is that uh, the charter requires a five-year plan. And, right. Uh, I don't think that we can use that language in uh, that's later in the same section, Mandy, to um, make an exception, but that's possible. But in any event, um, it is a charter requirement and it is good planning to at least think about it. We just don't have the wavelength to give the attention immediately to that issue, but we should be thinking about the long range which was why I was concerned about having all these things we weren't funding this year just put into a column that wasn't then in the five-year plan because that didn't seem to be compliant with the charter vision either. Um, so I'm not gonna solve it tonight because I think we've exhausted ourselves tonight, but uh, uh, at some point we've got to get back and think about the question of what the charter requires us to do and make sure we get there. Is the emergency provision that's also in the charter, which can't waive a state law, could it apply? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking because I think putting out, and Paul's the one who has to put out the capital plan, and you're due to put that out on June. I looked at the date, whatever that is, is late in June. But an out year plan that's unbalanced or has large ticket items in it when we've foregone some stuff, you know, I'm, there, a lot of work would have to happen between now and that to have it have some credibility and meaning. Um, I'm not saying that it's impossible, uh, but you're, you, you know what your workload is like between getting to a one month budget and a 12 month budget on these other things. So it's, it's, just, it's, it's just a question because I have as hard as it is to deal with this year, 
looking forward to these other years when I went to the detailed columns, I had questions on many of the line items on, do we absolutely have to put this in? And if that wasn't in, then I get nearer to a balance in that year if the revenues were back up to the 10% of uh, general revenues. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a question on how we write a report um, and how Paul gives a capital plan. Those are just recommendations to the town manager. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say just, but. <laughs> Mandy. Yeah. Um, we've already delayed the submission of the capital improvement plan from Paul to the council by approximately two months, right? Because um, I think it was originally supposed to be submitted by May 1, and now we're down to July 1. Um, the charter, I, I, I can't speak because I don't know MGL. I'm not sure MGL requires the submission of an actual capital improvement plan or capital plan. So that's a charter requirement. So I would guess that the charter 5.9 that we allowed, that we used to delay that submission to the council by two months could probably be voted for another delay if we wanted, if the manager decided in terms of that the capital improvement plan, um, if we is not set enough to be able to submit to the council, he could probably request another extension that if this committee supported or you know put out support for the council might go for it because i think when we vote a budget and i'm sure andy and paul and sean can correct me if i'm wrong we've changed from voting really specific line item budgets on everything to sub to voting essentially bottom line budgets a bottom line budget on schools library and pretty much general government everything else and a bottom line budget on capital in addition to the capital improvement plan. And given the proposal that we see here that had essentially one general capital number and then a couple more specifics in terms of the line item, maybe it's time for us to think about for the budget season, voting a bottom line capital number, especially if Paul and Sean intend for when those line items come through for that general number that's now sitting at 300, but by next week might be a different number given our feedback. Um, if they're gonna get voted separately in September anyway, maybe we think about voting or recommending that the council vote a simple bottom line of whatever that is, 1.206 or whatever it is million without any line items to with a maybe specific vote of to be you know line itemed out later um, that would allow us time as JCPC to really deal with in the fall a little more information as to where revenues are what can be covered by potentially CARES Act grants um, and to move some of these delayed items into FY22 if we think they can be delayed and try and work on a little bit more balancing of a five-year plan. Are there any reactions to Mandy's suggestion? Uh, Peter? It's an, it's Peter. Paul. <laughs> Peter, Paul. Oh, there we uh, don't have it, a Mary. <laughs> it, it's, it's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought about that. I mean, we sort of had proposed something like that by doing the one item, line item for, um, for the 300,000. Um, and I think what you're saying is reserve everything for capital, but just not allocate it. I mean, they're, they're, the reason we put roads forward because there was some time sensitivity to be able to use that during the construction season, uh, which would be, gone, be, you know, that those funds would become available July 1 and will allow us to sign contracts to move some of those projects forward um, this summer. Uh, we know that the road construction projects can move forward because they were outside. There were no, when we start, started talking about this, there were no issues with, you know, this is other things were more constricted under um, the uh, COVID issues. But um, I just want to think about that. That's, it's an interesting idea. I don't know, anything off the top of your head, Sean? 
on that? You're muted. Um, well, I think one thing, if we were going to go that route, we could work with Guilford to find out how much of that money he would need for July and get that, um, maybe bring that for approval first. And that, and that would obviously be a much smaller number than what was put forward. And then we could go back later on for the rest of it. Right, right now, the, um, the sixth chart you had in terms of what adds up to the 1.4 million, which, you know, and then as, and then if you also add the 847, 841, the other money, the state aid, um, roads and sidewalks are more than 50% draw on the tax supported piece. If you add the 841, that's chapter 90 and the 63, you know, even if we had something that said 50% of this total dollar amount would be roads and sidewalks and the rest would be, I mean, if we can get at least 50%, you know, so if, if we can get some sense where how far does 841 of chapter 90 get us plus the 63 plus some part of the rest of this. So that it's just, I think what we're asking is the same level of scrutiny of what's on his to-do list um, and yeah, Paul. Yeah, just uh, I don't think you can really count chapter 90. There's no clarity. They say it will be signed, but it has not moved one inch out of their out of the Senate committee. And I don't see the legislature moving anytime. So you can't count on that for this. I don't think you can count on it for this road season. Um, so I think it's not really, you, you can't, I think that's an other funding source. We should be looking at our funding sources when you're looking okay. at this. And so I'll just stay by my statement. It's 1.1 million out of 1.4 million on our, the money that we think we've got to allocate. Um, yep. so, so that's the question of, um, and it's the only named item. So Mandy's suggestion is to go to no named item and talk about it all reserved there might be an in-between point that could do up to or as much as or something. So you wouldn't have all the people who have roads and sidewalks at the top of the list thinking that means nothing for roads and sidewalks. I, you know, I don't know what, what the right um, optics are for how this gets expressed. Peter. Yeah, um, just like general reaction to Mandy's kick the can down the road plan. Um, I, I think it could be workable. I'm, I'm trying, I don't mean it in a disparaging term. I mean, kick the, I mean, kick the can down in the most respectful tone possible. Um, I, 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 th I think it does make a lot of sense in some respects because there, you know, we don't want to pay for certain line items that could potentially get taken care of by other free money that's coming in, right? So that like, we, we don't want just, just in order to rush and say we did it, we had a plan. Um, the, the, the timing challenge and, and this, Sean, I think is something that you'd probably pretty quickly have to try and work out with the department heads is, is it, what are the timing requirements? Like what are the cans that can't be kicked? So for example, the schools, the schools, kids go back the first week of September, right? Um, and, um, and if we're gonna plan uh, in a major way for that, when the COVID environment, um, we're pretty quickly, and I mean like next month, gonna have, gonna go from, we don't know, there's lots of possibilities to, we have detailed CDC guidance, here's all the stuff we have to have in place, right? So the school has a number of cans that you, you, you could kick a few weeks, but you can't be in September talking about, should we repair the Fort River roof or, um, you know, should we, um, you know, set up the plexiglass dividers in, in, in the open classrooms, that kind of thing. Um, you know, th that being said, you know, you could maybe splice off some of that stuff. Maybe you don't buy, maybe you don't replace the 2003 plow um, until you absolutely have to. Maybe you run that risk. Um, and, and, you know, that's something that's a really high priority, but maybe that's something that could, that could be kicked. And so, so in addition to asking the department heads what's super critical, ask, you, you know, you get a sense of the timing of like, well, if you don't decide on it by, you know, July 1st, then you're just not doing it. Um, unfortunately, I think just because the, the school season, the, the schools are going to have a fair number of those, but, um, you know, it's, a, it's certainly a question you can ask. Yeah. 
Mandy has her hand up again. I just have a process question as it relates to the CARES stuff. As Peter was talking, you know, some of the stuff that might need spent between now and September to get the kids back in school, as we've identified, could probably be paid for by CARES Act money. Do we have to get that granted first before we buy it? Or are we pu pulling it out of sort of our cash capital and then assuming reimbursement into cash capital? Like, how is that going to work? you know, so that, you know, the schools are going to have to buy plexiglass dividers for a whole bunch of things probably, and maybe a lot more safety cones or, or who knows what, right? Um, just to get the kids back in school. Um, is that coming out of our cash capital now and then seeking reimbursement from CARES over the next couple months? How long might that take? And then does that go back into capital for sort of repurposing for non-COVID related expenses in capital? Um, so uh, I'll confirm with Sonia, but we've set up separate funds for CARES Act type expenses and FEMA expenses. And so as we incur expenses, they get charged there and then we would seek reimbursement for those. So again, there's gonna be, there's two rounds of reimbursement, one for FY20 for things that have, um, have already been incurred. And that just, that the application window just opened up for that. Um, but we can also request things we anticipate to incur before June 30th, so we can kind of do both at the same time. Um, and then another window is going to open up for FY21, or we can request what we anticipate um, for FY21 through um, December. So, I so, guess but, so, so, so from an accounting perspective, it's not like coming out of capital funds first and then being, being, made, re um, being made available again. Um, we're, we're identifying those costs now. I guess my follow-up would be, what does that look like when the council votes the budget? If we're anticipating spending that money and so sort of- these are, these are all one of the requirements for the most part of these are unbudgeted expenditures. Hmm. Um, in order to even qualify for COVID, it's gotta be something that wasn't budgeted as of March um, for this year. It has to be something that wasn't budgeted as of, uh, I think it was March 27th or something like that, maybe a little earlier. Um, so yeah, there, so you wouldn't budget it for next year because if you budget it then it would be tough to get reimbursement for it. So we're not budgeting, essentially we're not budgeting for anything school related to get the kids back in school that we think could be reimbursed by CARES Act. I mean, we'll have to talk about it, but we're, I don't think at this point we would budget for it in the general fund. We would plan for it as a um, reimbursable expense from the CARES Act. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Any other, I'm, I'm looking at the hands up, any other? Paul, you had your hand up, I think, before we flowed into this conversation, or maybe not. Yeah, again, just what Mandy said, if it's a if it's COVID-related expense, plexiglass, which is now, if you had invested in plexiglass a little while ago, um, then it's a CARES, it can be reimbursed through the CARES Act or one of those pots that the school department, the schools have different pots, we have different pots, everybody's got pots of money to draw from for this specific thing. And Sean is exactly right. It's unbudgeted. You can't say, oh, I meant to pay this. The one thing that we, there's the unknown, it's still, and that's, this is happening in Washington, is whether we can use this to replace lost revenue. We have significant lost revenue. And a lot of the you know, cities and towns and states are seeking to use some of the funds coming from the federal government to replace lost revenue. They have not given us permission to do that. So it all, at this point, has to all be new expenditures. Um, so it depends what Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell decide up there, I guess. So I guess I need a sense of our committee members on where we are um, and including do should we schedule a follow-up meeting for a week from now um, where Paul and Sean and staff can get back with a revision of the revision um, with some additional information on the critical criteria. I guess I think we did critical urgent and also the timing that we need to know now because we're going to have to do it in June, July, or August. Um, it's not a, you can tell us in November. So that's one question. And are we, if we're talking about um, high level numbers, Mandy, you know, rather than line items, are we also talking about that for the 
four years, the five years worth, that we think there'll be this much money for capital and not going into the detail for those, or we mainly focus just on this year. Because it's, so that's question two. And then question three is this committee has not normally met in the fall. Would we want to, as the picture becomes clearer, to at least address the multi-year side of this, or are we gonna assume that's just being taken care of someplace else? So meet next week, yes or no? <laughs> You know, are we going to go of a focused route? Because we we have the time. You know, our our report is due to Paul on June first. So, and then he has to put together the capital plan, which has the multi-year side of it. But he needs he needs at least some guidance or recommendations from us on what we think he can reasonably do. Yeah, Paul. I know this is advisory to me, but uh, my advice to you would it would be helpful if you did if you would be able to provide time to meet next week so we could come back based on this feedback, which is very valuable, and give you a, di a different scenario, um, and think about a little bit more uh, what Mandy Joe had talked about. Um, so I think having a follow up meeting for next Wednesday would be useful. Does that work for everyone next Wednesday at the same time, the five thirty slot? Yes, it looks like thumbs up, heads are nodding, yep, okay. Okay, so we will schedule that and we'll leave it with an agenda that says follow, follow up um, with information to come. And Tamsin, Ellie, I promise that when I put your email in, I'll do it correctly. So you, to the extent we get the materials in advance, you will get them at the same time everyone gets them. Just so everyone knows, the staff has been really good at immediately posting them in a packet. So if you, um, you can go back and if you can't find the email with all these attachments, it's on the JCPC website under packets with the, the meeting date. So it, the materials are there, including the meeting we never had that had all the trucks and vehicles on it. Okay, so I think we'll do that and then we'll figure out, um, I, you know, I, I will volunteer to draft something. And I know Alex, you helped Andy last year on the draft of the report and we can do something if you're willing, if we get to some more clarity next week, we can send the draft out pretty quickly and just get people's feedback on it to meet this June 1st deadline. Yep, Paul. I think you might have a district meeting next Wednesday. Oh, I do. Thank you. I'm the only one who has a conflict. <laughs> you know, so our, our district meeting is at six. Um, yes, Paul. That was from, that wasn't from me, that was from Lynn. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. that's from Lynn. About seven? So it, um, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're scheduled from 6 to 7.15. So 7.30 would be feasible or earlier than 5.30 would. Well, Carrie, you can't do that, right? Because you work. Um, I don't know about Tuesday or Thursday evenings at this time slot. Last, this week, it conflicted with a school committee meeting. So we couldn't do Tuesday night, but Tuesday's open for me. Next Tuesday, we also have a school committee meeting. Okay, so no, not Tuesday. Thursday, potentially. Thursday would conflict with two district meetings, but the other two counselors on this call, while we would like to go, are not, we're, we're at large, so they are not technically our district meetings. So, well, clearly I'm the one with the conflict next week and I can't, I can't move it. Um, so we're scheduled to start at six. So we could either, we could start this could meeting. We, yeah, go on. Start this meeting at seven with a, our vice chair chairing it for the first 15 minutes till you can pop over, Kathy. That sounds fun to me. Would that work for people? That works for me. And I, you know, since we'll get the materials in advance, I think that'll be, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so we'll schedule it for seven next Wednesday. And then yeah. Alex, Alex, it will be very important that we make sure you get the Zoom login. <laughs> so. 
So I, I guess I want to, you know, um, Peter's got his hand up. So before we do any closing remarks, but Peter, you had your hand up. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to really quickly answer the, you had three questions there. Um, yes, I do think we should meet in the fall. Um, okay. For all the reasons that you mentioned and on a related note to answer your other question, I think as much as possible, at least this body right now shouldn't pay too much attention. And you should, I don't think you should spend a lot of mental clicks trying to cast some projection on the, on the five-year plan. Um, saying five-year five -year plans aren't good or required by the charter, but I think as much as possible for us to focus on this year, I think would be best. Okay, any other closing comments before we turn to inspire thoughts next Wednesday? Um, okay, I think we... Um, uh, I guess I'm supposed to entertain a motion to adjourn. And do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, Sean. Pardon? Oh, minutes. Okay, so here, um, minutes. I think um, at least I'm pretty tired. We posted minutes. I sent you the minutes from the March 11th meeting. We've also posted them from the other two meetings because we've never gone over them. My suggestion on minutes would be, and this is a suggestion, it's something we use on finance, is you all take a look at them, send any changes, comments just to me, and you could authorize me to finalize the minutes. These were all taken by our minute takers, um, and I made some editing changes so far, mainly on people's names that weren't spelled correctly, or they had uh, they still had Eric Nakajima on the committee. So you know, just making sure the list of who's on the committee and not absent. Um, so if people were willing to do that, and there's three sets of minutes and, um, and you send them to me, then we can just do a quick kind of consent agenda on final minutes next week rather than go over specific changes tonight. Is that a reasonable proposal? I'm seeing everyone nod. Yes. Okay, so that item on the agenda, there are no unexpected in the last 48 items, so that agenda item is gone. So is there a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. I second it. Everyone, I think we can all just say aye. We don't have to take a vote. Um, yes. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. And thank you, staff. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> this must have been extremely difficult to put together, so we do appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.